Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we come in, in, in prayer and, and in humility, seeking these ancient words, seeking new meaning for our lives right now and going forward. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> At our rehearsal dinner for our wedding almost 34 years ago, my best man, Bob, he, as he was delivering his toast that day, he, he took out of his bag a gift. It was a squash racket. It was a broken squash racket. It was my squash racket. I had broken that racket playing with him once, and, well, pretty obviously, I lost that day. Now, I don't remember specifically when it was. I don't remember what was happening that day or, or what the score was. I don't remember any of the details, but this much I know happened for sure on that day. I broke, I broke for certain multiple times one of the Ten Commandments, the Lord's name in vain. As we begin this sermon series on the Ten Commandments, the first thing I want to say about that is that I'm pretty sure, I hope I'm not going out on a limb, but I'm pretty sure every single one of us, at least a couple times, at least a couple of these commandments, we've broken them at one time or another. And so how grateful we all should be that we worship a forgiving God and so as we start out here, let us remember that on this third Sunday of Easter, it's still Easter and we are still celebrating that we worship a Lord who gave his life so that we would know that God is always ready to forgive us. There will be, of course, no pointing of fingers because we're all in the same boat. <clears throat> Lynn and I have been watching a binge watching maybe, a series on Netflix called Ozark. If you're looking for a show where multiple of the Ten Commandments are broken on a routine basis, this is your show. The main family, Marty and Wendy Barrett and their two kids, they, they it, believe it or not, it's sort of a family story. They, they, if you didn't know better, when you meet them at first and maybe even at parts of the show, you'd think they were sort of a regular family, you know, with two kids and hardworking. But we pretty quickly learn in the show that years before they had made a very bad decision to help earn a little more money, a decision which definitely broke one of the commandments and leads them to break others. And now they're paying the price as they go from one disaster, one nightmare, to the next. Now, a little quick sidebar here, not necessarily related to the sermon, but, it, you know, if you, even if you think it's harmless, do not do business with a drug cartel. <laughs> Just a sidebar. As a series unfolds, one commandment after another are broken, not just by... Marty and Wendy. And that makes this show example 1A of what life would be like in a world without the Ten Commandments. And so the second thing I want to lift up here as we talk about the Ten Commandments is that they are one of the greatest gifts that God has ever given to humankind. Imagine a world without the Ten Commandments. Depending on which commandment we're talking about, it is possible that just breaking one of them has the potential to ruin a life or lives. Thank God for this gift. It's a gift of rules meant to protect us from our worst instincts. Standards, we get here, our standards, they're for us and for our kids that are easy to remember 
but not that easy to follow through on. And the rules from a God who understands the temptations that we human beings can su succumb to. 3,400 years ago, Moses came down from Mount Sinai after his iconic meeting with God. And he had two stone tablets in his hand and he brought those stone tablets down to, to pass along from God these 10 laws to a people who'd just been freed after 400 years of slavery in Egypt. The first sentence of the reading reminds us of this. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Those Israelites, they wouldn't have had a clue what to do with this newfound freedom under these, in the wilderness there. The, the, the potential chaos of the wilderness. And so, at first they flounder, complaining repeatedly. And in response to that, what God does is, and it's just a few months into their time in the wilderness, God gives them this great gift of rules to help keep them on track. Now, we might be tempted to see this idea of rules. Now, you know, that's not that inspiring. We might be tempted to see rules as more of a burden than a gift. But I'd argue that these rules, they were and they still are a gift of love from a God to a people who God loved. To the Israelites, of course, but also to us. You see, because one of, this is because one of the most remarkable aspects of these Ten Commandments is that in, an, in our ever-changing world, they are as fundamental to life today as they were 3,400 years ago when Moses first gave them. Why? Why, you might ask? Are they still just as foundational as they ever were? Because we human beings are just as prone to trouble as we were 3,400 years ago. A fact that is sadly borne out every day with shattered personal lives and broken and breakdowns in broader society as these basic laws are broken. Daily news stories show the danger of veering away from God's most basic rules for life. Something maybe especially that resonates at this moment of angst, of fear, of division, of anger, this tense time with we're, we're talking about racial tensions and, and mass shootings, and this time where we have big disagreement about how to solve those problems, a time when it feels like no matter what our perspective or our background, it feels like we're walking on eggshells. And so what a blessing it is that today, yet again, we get a reminder of this touchstone, these, these, um, these grounding, this grounding to good things, something we want to remember and something we want to pass along to our kids something that we want to refer back to that also will help guide us looking forward. All of it a reminder, all ten a reminder that God doesn't abandon God's children in the wilderness. Instead, God comes bearing a great gift. Over the next ten weeks, we will be looking at each of these commandments, seeking to understand these ancient words through more modern eyes and, eyes and for our modern lives. And as background, it is vital to see something that all 10 of these have in common, something that is of the utmost importance to God. Maybe we could say it's God's number one priority. Our relationships, our relationships with God in our relationships with each other. When we step back and we notice the chronology, we see that the first four, 
that Pastor Moira read, they're about our relationship with God. No other gods before the Lord. No graven images. No taking the Lord's name in vain and keeping the Sabbath. These are the so-called first table of the Ten Commandments. And then the last six are about our relationships with each other, honoring our parents and no murder or adultery or stealing or lying or coveting. These are the so-called second table of the Ten Commandments. It's also helpful to notice here that this, these Ten Commandments and these two tables are in the same, the exact same chronology as Jesus' great commandment. The first part is to love God, and the second part is to love our neighbors as ourselves. But the fact that they're so synced up shouldn't be a surprise. It would be a surprise if God and Jesus were not synced up. This is the picture of a God who wants the best for us in life and a God who knows that the best things flow from relationships. In these great rules, God is telling us how important it is to tend to those relationships, individual and societal relationships, to tend to them with great care, our relationships with God and with each other. In closing, there's one more question I'd like to, and one more issue I'd like to especially highlight or focus on. That question is, why, why in both the Great Commandment and the Ten Commandments does the God, does the focus on God come first? Let me answer that this way. On this new member Sunday, our tradition for many years now in this act of covenant, call and response, we begin with the new members answering this question. Will you serve as a faithful member of this congregation, sharing in our worship and ministry and joining us as we strive as Christ's faithful disciples to love the Lord with all our hearts and our neighbors as ourselves? And then asking, after asking that question, I next said, if so, please respond. I will, with God's help. Friends, as basic as the Ten Commandments are and the Great Commandment, there is nothing that's easy or all that natural here. Good relationships are not easily made. And God wants us to work on those relationships individually and writ large. They're not easy because human nature can very often lead us in troubling and unselfish directions. We all know this. And because of that, we always need God's help. God, the perfect place to start. When you're in the wilderness or wherever you are. Amen.